Welcome to the MVP show. Full show notes for this episode can be found at 337. Before we chat with today's guest, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge. I cover the following key areas on how to grow your career, communication, consulting, technology, Microsoft, engagement in the community, developing your personal brand, as well as career paths. If you're interested in the next 90-day mentoring challenge, please go to nz365guy.com forward slash mentoring. Now let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Montreal, Canada. He is a power platform and Dynamics 365 CE specialist. He got it awarded as MVP in March this year, so nice and new. He grew up in Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean, but he also loves the cold so much that he actually spent six months studying in Sweden and is currently based in Montreal, Canada. He is the lucky girl dad of two amazing girls. You can follow him on t- Twitter at Raphael uh, Putin uh, or on his blog, on which is on medium.com uh, forward slash Raphael dash uh, Potten. Welcome to the show, Raphael. Thank you for the invitation. Well, what I'd like you to do is, in French, pronounce your name so our listeners have it 100% correct. Yeah, in French, it's Potter. Potter. So it's, it's Raphael Potter. Yeah, exactly. I like it. I like it. Well, tell me a bit about Montreal. What's it like? Is it, is it one of these locations that, you know, spend winter at minus 30 degrees Celsius or, or, or what's it like there? It depends the day, but yeah, almost uh, all winter is like this with a lot of snow. The good years, I would say, because I love snow. Uh, but sometimes you, you have days with sun and better temperatures. But it's, it's uh, I would say, a, a big city in North America. Um, and for a French guy like me, it's it's a big city here, but it's really great to, to live here because you have house, uh, you have um, the center of the, the town is is big with a lot of buildings, but you can quickly uh, go in, in more calm place. Mm-hmm. So is it like Toronto, as in I've not been to Montreal, but is it like Toronto in that you can connect a lot of the buildings and you can move underground? So in wintertime, you don't need to go outside? Yeah, yeah. you have the same uh, in the center uh, of the city. Yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And so what's the coldest it's ever got for you? Oh, um, minus 40, I guess. Wow. And so I take it, you can't go outside at all at minus 40 or, or do you have to, you know, what's the situation there? Because yeah, thought- you try, you try to stay inside, <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, I have uh, two dogs, so you have to go outside, uh, at least uh, a few minutes per day for them. So even if it's minus 40, you go outside. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. What's the best thing about living in a country that has so much snow like that? I would say just the snow because it's nice to play in the snow, even uh, more over with the kids. Um, but just the snow is great. And if you, you spend a few hours uh, in the car, you have just forest and the nature. So it's great. What's the, you know, I see there that you went and spent some time in Sweden. What took you to Sweden? Was it just a study? Yeah, yeah, just a study. I got the opportunity to to go there. So I, I tried, just like I, you've mentioned in the introduction, I, I love the cold and the snow. So I got the opportunity to go in the north of Sweden. So I took it. Wow. So So what did you study while you were there? Oh, computer science, but it was really calm. <laughs> Just uh, one or two hours of a uh, uh, course per week. So it was a bit uh, just chilling here and <laughs> enjoying the snow and the cold. Wow. And so at, at that level, were you are you in the Arctic Circle there or is it not quite that high? Uh, a little bit below uh, the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Incredible, incredible. And and what did you notice was kind of the biggest cultural differences between there and home? Oh, uh, the food. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, for a French guy, it was a bit difficult to spend uh, so many months 
uh, in Sweden. It's it's a different, uh, I would say, food culture, um, and it's a little bit easier for for me here in Canada than it was in Sweden. Yeah. So so speaking of food, you know, Eric Save, he's uh, a Frank from your part of the world uh, as another MVP, and of course. He is constantly putting these photos online of the most amazing barbecues and and food dishes that he's creating. How how big a part of you know uh, of your lifestyle and stuff revolves around food as well, particularly I suppose cuisine that's come more from um, your French roots. Uh, I don't know for the Canadian people <laughs> because I'm here just uh, since uh, three or four years now. Uh, but yeah, for for French people and even from for Reunion Island people, uh, it's it's really important. Uh, you when you meet uh, with your family and things like that, it's always around food. And and I, I remember also when I was uh, studying in Lyon in France. Uh, sometimes I, I went alone in a restaurant just to enjoy some good uh, good meal. Ah. Uh- you know, I've I've been to Lyon as well, and uh, uh, for me, the you know every time you order a drink at a bar, they always give it to you with food, and and oh my gosh, now I can't remember if it's tapas or pinchos, but oh they're to div- they're to die for. They're just amazing. Yeah, and I think it's more difficult when you go there uh, just for some vacation because when you live in a city like Lyon. Uh, you stay at home a lot, but uh, when now we we go back for some vacation, we we almost go every day in a restaurant just to enjoy some some food. So it's it's sometimes a bit difficult <laughs> to come back. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. So the other interesting thing, Reunion Island, like a lot of people wouldn't know where that was in the world. Do you want to explain a bit about growing up there and and where it is? Yeah, it's uh, near uh, Madagascar and South Africa. So it's a small French island here, lost in the Indian Ocean. And we have, uh, I would say, a sister island, uh, Mauritius. Um, and it's great to, to live here. You, you, you grow with a lot of cultures around you. We have a lot of African people, of course, a lot of Indian people, a lot of Chinese people. So you grew up in in a mixed culture like that and i think it 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 was the best part of my my this this time of my life for sure and i i have as uh, most part of my family here so i was with everyone during uh 18 years and then i i left for the studies to to france wow I mean, you know, it's. I've actually just while talking to you, of course, jumped online and looked it up, and and could see that it was next to Madagascar, and and then I, you know, I've heard of Mauritius a lot, and I never knew where Mauritius was, and didn't realize that it is, as you say, the sister <laughs> island. Yeah. Um. Wow. I, you know, these are, both these locations have now just been added to my bucket list of places that I want to go to. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. So in going, if I was to visit these locations, what what do you recommend the must-do things um, if I went to uh, Reunion Island? I think one really interesting thing to do in, in Reunion Island is to, during the same day, go in the mountains, for example, for the, the morning, go hiking in the mountains, and then after lunch, go to to the beach to enjoy the sun <laughs> and you can do that during the same day so it's really nice can you drive right around the island in one day uh yeah yeah i think so i, I was um uh, doing um uh roller skating when i was when i was young and we had an event when where we went around all the island during one day we we left early <laughs> in the morning, but we were able to to go around during one day. Incredible, incredible! Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to go there. So, you obviously um, studied uh, computer science. How did you get into 
um, you know, into the career position you you are now. You know, uh, how did how did that come about for you? Yeah, I went to an engineering school in France, and during my first internship, I got the opportunity to to work on a, a CRM. Uh, it was a, a, an open source CRM, and I oh, what discovered. Was it called? Uh, Sh- sugar CRM uh, this time, but it's a sweet CRM now. And uh, I've discovered this kind of tools uh, during this internship. And then for the second internship, I had to make, um, I got another opportunity around CRM and this time around Dynamics 365 uh, 2011. And I've continued like that. And from an opportunity to another, um, I've worked around different uh, CRM uh, solutions. Um, and when I came, I arrived in Montreal, Canada, it was to, to work only on Dynamics 365. Uh, and since then, I only worked on Dynamics and I discovered the Power Platform. And now I am lucky I am an MVP. <laughs> yeah. So, t- so tell us... Y- when you say you work on Dynamics 365, is it more, is there one particular module that you focus on, um, you know, as in like sales or customer service? What what area do you specialize in? Uh, it's mostly sales, uh, but during my l- previous um, job, I work also on uh, human resources um, and on project service automation. But uh, yeah, I mean, my... My uh, career, I work mainly around sales, the sales module. Yeah. And so t- tell us about a typical project that you would do using sales. You don't need to mention the customer's names or anything like that, but just tell us about, you know, some of the the, the projects that are most memorable to you. Yeah, the so, so most project I've worked on, it was uh, mostly around uh, keep things going. <laughs> Uh, there was already a Dynamics 365 and uh, I had to participate to some uh, new features, some updates, obviously the major releases and things like that. Um, but I'm currently working on the deployment of a Dynamics 365 sales uh, solution for a big organization. Um, and it's it's a bit new for me and it's really interesting to, to see the challenges you, you can uh, face uh, during a, a, I would say, big deployment of this kind of solution in a big company. How much does DevOps play into what you do? <laughs> um, since I will say, um, when I arrived in Montreal, I, I tried to, uh, I started to learn a lot and more than before. And I've discovered things like uh, testing and also uh, the next step was a bit around uh, ALM. And now I'm I'm really a fan of uh, the DevOps culture. Um, I think it's it's a really a great way to to empower dev teams and to to allow them to to develop features and and to configure new things in solution really quickly and with a better quality. I would say. Uh, and and it's I, I'm trying to 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 motivate uh, people. To follow this kind of of, uh, of philosophy, I would say. I like it. How, how, tell us a bit about your journey to becoming an MVP. How did that come about? Uh, same thing. When I arrived in Montreal, I started to to go to to some meetups, some events, and try to discover different communities and also uh, uh, Dynamics three six five business application communities here in Montreal and. Uh, at some point, um, I decided, okay, I, I want to share uh, my ideas, uh, what I know with others too. So I think uh, I spoke once in the local uh, meetup group. And then in February 2020, um, I got the opportunity to speak uh, during an event in Tampa, Florida, um, thanks to Beth. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I went there as a French guy, never went to to US before, never spoke to an event, <laughs> and this time it was in English. So I went there and it was great. And 
unfortunately, uh, after that COVID-19 uh, struck. So it was a bit more difficult to, I would say, to to go to events and things like that. But I continued to get some opportunities to spin during, uh, during virtual events. So I continued the world like that, uh, tried to write some articles, trying to to build some solutions in GitHub. And at the end of 2020, I helped some friends uh, in France, <laughs> some friends in France uh, to organize an event, um, a big event around the Power Platform. It was virtual, obviously. And um, after this event, um, some people proposed to, to, nominate, to nominate me. So it was... Uh, the beginning of the journey. So good. What were those virtual events that uh, you've done in the last, um, well, during the COVID period? What are the main virtual events that stand out on your mind that you've spoken at? Oh, I think it was uh, the event uh, in France uh, in November last. Oh, it, oh, it's difficult because I participated also to the Scottish Summit as a volunteer. <laughs> so, oh, it's difficult because the Scottish Summit is, is something. Uh but yeah, I will uh, say the, the French event uh, last year in November, the Power Platform French uh, Submit. Um, and I was in the organization committee and I got the opportunity to, to speak uh, during the second keynote for the second day. I, I had two sessions, I think. So it was uh, a big event for me. Uh, and I had to to wake up at 3 a.m. the morning because it was in France. <laughs> but it, it was great. That was the Power Platform French Summit 2020, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and then I see you've also spoken at, uh, uh, let me see here, um, the Dynamics 365 FinOps Boot Camp. Yeah, it was in January, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so good. You've, you, you, you're doing a lot of... You're making sure you're obviously, you know, staying on on the circuit, so to speak, speaking at these public events. Any any tips you have for people on how to present well in a virtual um, at a virtual event? Oh, present well, I don't know. To present, I can say, but to present well, it's a bit more difficult. You know, it's way, it's we're way different than doing it in person, right? So, is there anything that you kind of that you you do differently? Differently in virtual than in person. Uh, obviously, you don't have the same um, the same atmosphere. I would say because uh, during the only event I was in person in Tampa, it was amazing uh, to to be uh, surrounded by so many people. Uh, and in virtual, it's a bit more difficult um, because you don't see uh, the participant <laughs> to your session and. You know, you are talking to, to your screen. So it's it's not the same. And you have to still to, to, to keep motivated and to talk just like if you have people uh, in front of you um, and keep, keep smiling, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so true, so true. Becoming an MVP, did it, has it had any impact on your life, career, anything like that? Uh, on my career, uh, for now, just a little bit, I would say. Um, uh, but uh, in my life, I think it's a little bit difficult because um, I, I try to to focus mostly on my family because just like you mentioned in the introduction, I have two little girls, so I want to spend time with, with them. But it's really difficult because you have access to so m- much content and so much things to, to try and it's difficult to say, okay, uh, I will not try that. I don't have the time, and I can't commit on on this pre- preview or things like that. And it's sometimes difficult because uh, you you want to try everything. You want to participate to every initiative. I would say I, I like that. I want to try things and to to give as much feedbacks uh, as possible. But uh, I have to stop myself. The balance, right? It's a balance. Family is important that uh, yeah. uh, the children are only young for a certain amount of time, right? And so you got to invest that time in them. Exactly. And I think also for, for the mental health, 
um, if I want to to stay in this community for a long time, and if I want to, for example, I, I hope I will be able to stay an MVP for for a while. And if I want to do that, I can say, okay, I I work every night during four or five hours because I know I will break <laughs> at some point. So I try to to work, for example, uh, every two two nights. A uh, few hours on some projects, some things to try, but uh, I try to to keep the focus on that. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, I always like to wrap up the show with a few random questions. Um, so I'm going to ask you three random questions. Are you ready? Yeah, I will do my best. Okay, first one. Would you rather be rich or famous? Oh, uh, rich. Yeah. Uh, I agree. What's your dream car? A car when I can. We have space for for the childrens, but also comfortable to to drive. Nice, nice. And the last one: Would you rather watch a movie at home or at the movie theater? Huh. In a movie room at home. Nice. A home theater. I love it. I love it. Well, Rafael, it's been great to have you on the show. Uh, I look forward to meeting you in person, maybe at a, at a, a live event once this world gets back to normal uh, to some degree. Yeah, sure. Thank you for the invitation, and I hope I will be able to meet you in person too soon. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP. Mark Smith, also known as the NZ365 guy. I've set up this little thing called buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy. And, you know, today uh, was the first day that somebody responded on that. It was a guy called Mike Ford. And uh, it just, for some reason, it was just total buzz at happening. And I don't think it's the fact that he's, you know, bought me a coffee, but it's the comments that he left behind. Um, and then And then Anna, you know, followed a little while later. Uh, and she left a comment. It's so, so nice um, getting uh, feedback that what you do is, is helping others in the community. So thank you so much. And with that, I'll see you next time.